are all of DeKalb County voters not here? U.S. Senator Dick Durbin stops by NIU and has a lot to say about money for science. And college can be unhealthy. We'll visit NIU's annual wellness fair. NTC News Tonight starts now. You're watching NTC News, DeKalb County's only television news source. On the campus of Northern Illinois University and from the Northern Television Center, this is NTC News Tonight. Even if there's only a small number of votes, every one of them counts. Good evening, I'm Carolyn Budvillis. Thanks for joining us. And I'm Lauren Baker, but the voter turnout yesterday in DeKalb County was the worst in 10 years. Barely 8% of registered votes showed up to the polls. The ballot also included DeKalb City Council races in a non-binding referendum calling for the end to political corruption. 87% of DeKalb voters, what few showed up, voted in favor of the question. DeKalb County Clerk Douglas Johnson says burnout may help explain the empty voting places. Uh, and I also believe that there is beginning to be um, voter burnout in Illinois with the amount of elections we had. We just got done in 2014 with a primary and a general. And here are the results for those DeKalb City Council races. Four aldermen positions were contested yesterday. The third ward was won by Michael Marquardt, who won over Steve Capitan. A former city clerk, Kate Noriko, won over two candidates in the fifth ward. Alderman Monica O'Leary won by just one vote in the seventh ward. And in the first ward, David Jacobson was unchallenged. Two new members have been elected to District 428 School Board, but the final results for the five writing candidates have yet to be tallied. Howard Solomon and Carrie Mullet were voted in last night as the newest members of the school board. The results were close with Mullet receiving more than 35% of the vote and Solomon receiving 34. Two more members will be added to the board from the remaining five write-in candidates. These candidates received nearly 31% of the vote combined. Congress is on its own spring break and U.S. Senator Dick Durbin is spending time back here in Illinois. Durbin paid a visit to NIU's campus yesterday. He joined NIU President Doug Baker to discuss various proposals to increase scientific research funding. We also had the chance to talk to Durbin about the controversial Iran nuclear agreement. Even though some Democrats are lining up against the deal, Durbin says it's not up to the Congress, but the President's call. So do you think the President has the authority to make that decision on his own then? Yes, he does. Okay. Congress has the authority to pass a law if it becomes a law uh, and to say that it has some authority in this area. If it reaches a point where the president thinks that it jeopardizes his power to negotiate on behalf of the United States, he may veto it. And then the question is whether Congress will override the veto. It is rare in our history. Durbin voiced support for funding science research, but students are talking about another campus issue. A campus-wide smoking ban is just around the corner. NTC reporter Karina Parada tells us how NIU's Health and Wellness Fair is helping students make the transition. I'm here at the NIU Health and Wellness Fair where hundreds of NIU students and staff and local community members have come together to learn about local health providers and health services. One issue this campus is facing in the upcoming months is a smoke-free ban on July 31st. The NIU Smoke-Free Task Force is one of many multiple tables making their debut at the fair. With the date of the ban quickly approaching, the task force wants students to know that there are resources for their use. We have the information on the nicotine replacement therapy. We have that here, the prices in this area, and how they work. So if anybody is actually interested in quitting, they can use that. The task force informed guests attending the fair they want the transition to be as simple as possible. They understand that the smoking norm is going to take time to change and are not concentrating on the enforcement at the moment. Right, so we're not really sure right now about enforcement policy enforcement. Right now we want it to be a cultural thing to where someone could just say, oh, smoking's bad on campus. Maybe you didn't know. Um, more of an education piece. The task force is also in charge of creating signage throughout campus to inform students that absolutely no smoking will be allowed. They will also be placing banners on light poles and placing signs around the athletic fields. We're going to take down the existing signage or stickers that are on all the building entrances and put up new uh, stickers that reflect the current wording in accordance with our uh, policy and state statute. The NAU Health Enhancement works closely with the task force and also has information on quitting. 
Yet smoking is not the only health issue being addressed at the fair. There are many other booths offering services and advice on living a healthier lifestyle. From drinking the right water to dentistry, it's all here. With how much work is yet to be done, the NIU Smoke Free Task Force is going to continue to meet after the start of ban to figure out how they're going to enforce the new policy. Andy Kalb, Karina Prada, NTC News. Just to clarify, the smoking ban takes effect at the start of July. Just how they enforce it is part about what we're going to talk about in just a few minutes. Police have tracked down a suspect in the hit and run in Sycamore we told you about last week. Police say 27-year-old Justin Duringer was involved in a hit and run near Elm and California Street last month. Duringer's bond was set at $10,000 and his court date is tomorrow. A decaled man is under electronic monitoring after being charged with cyber stalking. 24-year-old Jonathan Zanis is accused of posting a threat on Facebook to rape an NIU student. Police say Zanis connected with the victim through a social media app and met her last month at her residence hall. Police say the victim got uncomfortable and asked Zanis to leave. Zanis then threatened the victim and her friends through Facebook and text messages. A search is underway to replace DeKalb's Public Works Director, TJ Moore. Moore is leaving DeKalb to take a similar position in Hanover Park. It's not unusual for people to spend fifteen dollars to $20,000 on a car, but how many of us have dropped that much money on a pet dog? This past weekend, NTC reporter TJ Hopkins explored the Yorkville Kennel Club's annual dog show at the NIU Convocation Center. He has more on the work and expenses owners put into getting their dogs ready for the big show. This is TJ Hopkins reporting from the NIU Convocation Center where the Kennel Club of Yorkville is hosting its 59th annual dog show. Dog lovers from all over come to watch, sit back, and enjoy this showcase of different dogs. And I mean there is a wide variety of dogs. There are 800 dogs being showcased over the course of two days. Dogs coming in all shapes and colors, ranging from Great Danes to Golden Retrievers to Standard Poodles. These dogs are shown off to the judges and each breed is critiqued. And every breed has a breed standard. And the standard can be found on akc.org for every breed that is registered by the American Kennel Club. The judges are judging the dogs in confirmation according to the breed standard. Breed standard is what the dogs are judged by. This means the dog's hair has to be a certain length, a certain color, and even their heads have to be a certain size. Some owners spend an unbelievable amount of money just to get their dogs ready for the show. Um, we campaigned at Boceron last year and we easily spent $20,000. One thing I learned about the dog show is that anyone can win. Take 10-year-old Jacob Waters, for instance. He and his miniature pincher, Glory, won Best Junior. I just feel like shocked when I do it. I, I don't really, it's not uh, usual for Open Junior to win uh, uh, best junior, so. <laughs> Although this is a hobby for some, it still doesn't justify the amount of love each and every one of these dog owners have for their dogs. For NTC News, I'm TJ Hopkins. Wow, getting ready for that dog show looks like no walk in the park. <laughs> Brittany Merlot is here now to give us a look of the weather window for today and tomorrow. So Brittany, it's been a little gloomy for today. Are we going to see the rest for the rest of the week? Not the rest of the week, thankfully, but in the very near future, as in tonight and even tomorrow. So let's look at tomorrow's weather. We have a possibility for severe storms. Now, we're definitely going to see showers and thunderstorms. Some may be severe, so we're going to keep an eye on that. Temperatures are going to be beautiful, though, up into the low to mid-70s, which is partially why we're going to see the severe storms. So for more on this severe weather coming at us, stay tuned. And we're out. You got plans? You bet. Fifty million Americans struggle with hunger, but we can do something about it. Excuse me. What's going on? Dinner. Please join me in helping put food on their tables. Together, we can feed America. You guys keep going. I'm going to get the plate. Wait. Find your local food bank at feedingamerica.org slash hunger.
Welcome back. Today was definitely gloomy out there, but we did reach our seasonable temperatures of 54 degrees today. Now, if you were up early this morning driving to work or school, you were driving through some pretty dense fog. You could only see a quarter of a mile in front of you this morning. That quickly led way, though, to our just overcast decal skies today. And now, right to the south of us, we have some storms popping up. Those could become severe as they move closer towards us today. And this is because, and, and we're also going to have storms all throughout the night continuing because we have a stationary front just parked right over our area. So as it starts to cross over, we're going to keep seeing showers and storms pop up. And we do have a possibility for severe, so we need to pay attention to that throughout the night. It is just a slight to marginal risk, but as they move towards us, we need to keep an eye on that. And hail, too. They are already having reports of softball-sized hail down to the south of us. And as that moves closer to us, we will as well, but just for tonight, maybe a possibility. So that heavy rain is going to be coming through, staying in our area, which is going to lead to possible localized flooding. Again, we have that risk for hail. It shouldn't be too large or anything, but if you park under a tree tonight or in the garage if you have one, definitely. And also, if you're going out, be careful of that cloud to ground lightning. It is back and it is dangerous, so do be careful while you're out there. Now Thursday, this is looking great, isn't it? Nice, beautiful, warm temperatures pushing its way into Illinois, but it's also bringing moisture with it. And we have a cold front pushing through Thursday as well. And what that's gonna do is allow storms to start to fire up right in front of this front. So with all that moisture coming in, and this lift right here, we have a possibility for severe weather again tomorrow. And it's even a higher possibility for severe, as you can see, it's targeted right over most of Illinois. So Thursday, pay attention, get a weather radio if you don't have one at Walgreens really quick or stay tuned to your local stations. Now, Thursday night, th large hail, large hail. It's going to be pushing towards us. We have the isolated damaging wind gusts. So take anything you have inside. If you brought that patio furniture outside, bring it back in. And we can't rule out the possibility for tornadoes. So definitely keep an eye Thursday night on what's going on there. So tonight, cloudy with occasional showers and thunderstorms starting to push into our area. We're going to see a low of 45 degrees with about a half an inch of rainfall expected tonight. And as we move into tomorrow, those thunderstorms are going to continue to build as that warm air finally pushed in, reaching a high of 72. Those gusts are going to pick up and beware for the severe weather again on Thursday as well into Thursday night, like I mentioned, as it continues to go on. But tapers off after 1 a.m. We'll see a low of 42 degrees and those gusts are going to be up to 35 miles per hour. So bring in anything you got outside as well. Now onto my five day forecast Thursday again. That's the severe risk breezy goes into Thursday night. Friday, the clouds are going to start to push away. Temperatures are going to fall as that cold front moves through and we're going to see highs in the 50s possibly moving up to the 60s and to the mid higher 60s on the weekend and another possibility for severe weather as we push into Monday. So that's it for weather. Let's send it back to the desk. Thanks, Brittany. Now, back to something we introduced a few moments ago. NIU is coming closer to finalizing a legally mandated campus-wide smoking ban. And the university has assembled a group of people to tackle what must be a thankless task, how to make smoking ban work. Gina Hampton, a student member of the NIU Smoking Task Force. It's great to have you here. Thank you. So exactly what does July 1st mean? I mean, I know a lot of students think that police are just going to go out and just start busting them. What's really going to happen and what can we really expect? All right, so starting July 1st, because of the state law, smoking will be banned on any property that is owned or leased by NIU. So that's the main campus, that's satellite campuses like Rockford, um, that is also Laredo Taft and also the president's mansion. So smoking will not be allowed on property. Okay. And I think a lot of smokers may be saying, do you really expect us to go cold turkey? Is that realistic? So we don't expect uh, smokers to go cold turkey. Our main goal is to stop secondhand smoke, um, to eliminate that. Um, so we just want to encourage smokers to um, probably smoke somewhere else other than on campus, but we don't expect them to go cold turkey. We do provide resources like um, uh, nicotine replacement therapy and online resources that can help them as well. Um, how tough do you think it'll get it'll be to get students to comply to the new regulation? Um, I don't think it'll be that hard, that difficult, just because um, the transition period is going to be uh, not too um, harsh. Um, I think students will actually enjoy the not having to deal with smoking by doors and things like that. Okay. So, what are the things you're hearing from both smokers and non-smokers? I'm actually hearing positive and negative things from both uh, from both 
Um, when I told a, a student smoker that smoking is going to be banned next year, the first thing he told me was, great, it's going to be easier for me to quit smoking. Um, and then non-smokers, they're going to enjoy to be able to walk around without smoking to be on campus. And of course, we heard negative things from um, smokers um, that they feel like it'd be hard for them to quit. Um, but um, a lot of them are encouraged to start the process to quit. How are you going to enforce it? Uh, we don't know how we're going to force it yet. We're um, thinking about that process right at the moment, um, but we are definitely taking suggestions on how we should enforce it. Right now, we just hope a cultural change would um, go through to where people would just be respectful of the, the policy. All right, Gino, it sounds like this is a rather large challenge to take on, and we wish you success. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking your time to be here with us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Illinois State University loses two of its people in a plane crash overnight. Chicago is giving Rahm Emanuel another term as mayor. Let's take a look at to news making headlines across state Illinois. Chicago Mayor Rahm Emanuel is pledging to take a new approach to the big spike on pension costs, ongoing and gang violence negotiating with unions that spent millions trying to defeat him. Emanuel won a second term yesterday over Cook County Commissioner Jesus Chewy Garcia. Illinois State University's associate head basketball coach and a deputy athletics director were among seven victims killed in a small plane crash in central Illinois. The aircraft was returning from the NCAA basketball tournament in Indianapolis when it crashed in a field near Bloomington. An Illinois Army National Guard soldier and his cousin are being arraigned as on charges that suggest they plotted terrorist attacks to support the Islamic State group. Agents arrested Hassan Ahmad last month as he tried to board a plane in Chicago. Jonas Ahmad was arrested hours later in Aurora. Illinois Governor Bruce Rauner says the state Supreme Court is part of a corrupt system because of the campaign donation justices receive from attorneys who appear before the court. Rauner said he doesn't expect the justices to be rational in their decisions. And those are today's state lines. A South Carolina policeman is charged with murder after a simple, simple traffic stop. And a Boston jury says guilty. Here's what's happening in today's World Watch. A jury has convicted Johar Sunayev of a 30 counts he faced stemming from the 2013 bombing of the Boston Marathon. Sunayev was found guilty of conspiracy and use of a weapon of mass destruction. Of the 30 charges, 17 are punishable by death. Sunayev's lawyers tried to blame his now dead older brother. A white police officer is charged with murder after a video service appearing to show him shooting and killing an unarmed black man as he ran away. The South Carolina Law Enforcement Division says that the shooting happened after a traffic stop Saturday morning in North Charleston. The video shows Officer Michael Slager fire eight shots at 50-year-old Walter Scott. First term Kentucky Senator Rand Paul is throwing his hat into the, pres is throwing his hat into the presidential ring. The conservative libertarian made his announcement official at a rally in Louisville. Paul is the son of former Texas Congressman Ron Paul, who ran for president three times. The Justice Department is revealing details about a program that monitored the phone calls of American citizens for decades. They confirmed that federal DEA agents have kept secret logs of virtually every international call made from the U.S. to a list of targeted countries. The Justice Department says that the activity has stopped. And that's today's World Watch. We had an instant classic in Indianapolis Monday night. Hello everyone, I'm Brett Tudela for NTC Sports. One coach was looking for his quest for a fifth title, and another was looking for his fourth, but his first at the D1 level. Mike Krzyzewski was looking for his fifth title at Duke and his first since 2010 against three-time Division III champ Bo Ryan and the Wisconsin Badgers. Coach K and Bo are shaking hands right there before the game. And oh, hey, look, Aaron Rodgers shows up again. Late in the second half, Trayvon Jackson misses the shot but follows the shot and passes over to Sam Decker for the easy lay-in. Second half, now more Badgers when Bronson Koenig feeds Frank Kaminsky on the flex cut there for a nice easy layup. This time it's Josh Gosser feeding Kaminsky on the back cut for another easy layup. Wisconsin goes up by nine, and that's when Grayson Allen took over. Yes, I said Grayson Allen. He hits this three, then followed up by a nice drive to the hole with the finish and the foul. 
pumping up everybody on the Duke side. Coach K with a fist pump, bench behind him excited, and even Grayson Allen himself getting pumped, getting everybody excited. More from Duke now, as this time Tyus Jones draws a foul and hits the nice bucket. Duke's only down one at that point, but Frank Kaminsky says, I got a spin move here. I'll draw a fourth foul on Jaleel Okafor. You can see Okafor right there, very upset at himself, and the Wisconsin bench acknowledging that. Tyus Jones takes over, though. He hits this big shot, draws a little contact. He's lucky he didn't get offensive foul for a kick out there. Later in the half, Okafor tells Kaminsky, I got some spins for you, too. Draws a foul and one. After that shot, Tyus Jones cold-blooded as he hits this three. The, the final four most outstanding player scored 19 of his 23 points in the second half, leading Duke to that championship as they celebrate there. The Blackhawks took the ice last night at the United Center against the Minnesota Wild, who had a chance to clinch a, clinch a playoff spot with a win. Jumping all the way to the third period after a little action in the first two, there's Mike Yo, coach of the Minnesota Wild. Jason Pommerville will throw a puck in front, bounces around by Zach Parise, but Mikhail Granlin backhands that shot past Corey Crawford, 1-0 Wild. Later in the period, Chris Stewart leads the two-on-one break, feeds Jason Zucker, who beats Crawford again. 2-0 Wild, and they're pumped up for it. Later, though, under two minutes to go, Brian Pickle gets this loose puck and fires it past Devin Dubnik. A little late uh, energy from the Hawks there as they, go, as they cut the lead in half, but Dubnik would hold strong as he makes this nice glove save, sealing the victory for, the, for Minnesota. Over to baseball as the White Sox open their season in Kansas City against the defending American League champion Royals. And there we look, take a look at that American League Championship trophy. Some, Jeff Samarja making his first start as a White Sox pitcher, giving up this double to Salvador Perez. This is actually Samarja's third straight opening day start for Chicago baseball team. This time Evander Kane bloops one in between Abreu, Jose Abreu that is, and obviously El Garcia scoring another run. Samarja doesn't help himself out here at all. He throws a wild pitch past Tyler Flowers. 3-0 Royals, and they would score seven more, beating the White Sox by a final score of 10-1. That's it for here with me at Sports. We'll see you next week. Coming up, meet a Detroit woman who's been around longer than anyone you've known. We'll explain. I've got a job to do today. I've got a job to do today. Your donations to Goodwill fund job training programs right in your community. Feels good to start fresh, right? Sure does. And like that, you're a job creator. A Detroit woman now holds the title of world's oldest person. Geraldine Talley will turn 116 years old on May 23rd. Talley earned the title after the recent deaths of two other supersatirians. She doesn't take credit for her longevity. She says God's responsible for that. As for her health advice, Tally says she stays away from butter and cream, but she admitted that she has to have some sugar in her coffee. You and me both, Geraldine. I'm sure we can all take some notes from you. NTC News Tonight is produced and directed by students here at Northern Illinois University. We want to thank you all for being with us. Enjoy the rest of your evening. We'll be back at the same time tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Goodbye, everyone.